Hello, everybody. This is John Kyo, the chairman of the Trace Alliance program. Today, I want to share with you my expert view on implementing blockchain and how to get started. It's not necessarily linked and loaded with uh, blockchain. This is, in fact, a common platform and framework that I'll give you an overview on related to any technology and especially relevant right now for blockchain projects. So the objective of this expert session is to provide you with some insights from my experience, but also to share with you some tools and models that you and your teams can consider and then reflect upon when considering a broad technology project. So with that in mind, when we look at the supply chain, the supply chain will be the focus of, of this briefing. And I'm going to do this in 10 minutes, so it's going to be coming at you fast and heavy. Essentially, if you follow these types of models, it will help you with the ease of implementation. And it's also considered a best practice. Now, let's look and break this down a little bit. We know in the supply chain we have a concept of track and trace. Track and trace is really at the operational level. And it's about data collection. And in order to enable that, you need common enterprise standards or, or supply chain standards. And we have that today with GS1 standards. And remember that the origin trail protocol is built on GS1 standards. And then at the operational level, when you collect that data, at the business management level or the operational level, a little bit higher level in the organization, you have what's called event management. So what is actually happening? What are the business services that we have and the interoperability between our our different facilities, our different plants, our distribution partners, and our other business partners, our suppliers, and our customers. When an event happens in the supply chain, it's like something as simple as we have shipped something and you send an advance notification. So think about these three concepts, track and trace, you have to sense and respond, and then you have to analyze and decide. These are three different levels of aggregation in an organization. In the middle, the component here is captured, the sense and respond is captured, the event management, I should say, is captured with the GS1 EPCIS standard. And guess what? The origin trail protocol is built on the GS1 EPCIS standard. So for track and trace and the sense and respond in the supply chain, the data collection and the event management, the whole interoperability component, those critical components are already captured in the origin trail protocol. And on the right hand side is the optimization. Now, let me go to the next slide and explain that a little bit. If you look at the operation, operationalization and the analyze and decide, this is how you could look at it. At the bottom level here, we have operations and operational management or operations management. And a little bit higher than that, we have tactical, tactical business decisions. This is where the business strategy is defined and the operational strategy is defined. And at a higher level, the VP of supply chain is concerned with the strategic decision making of the organization. So as the data is captured at that lower level and at the tactical level, you're doing your event management. You're looking at things like trend uh, detection, predictive analytics and, and, and really tactical business planning between organizations. And that should feed up into your strategic level organization to help your executives to make better decisions. So this is very important, I think. Think about these things. The, the analyze and decide is critically important. It's what you do with the data and how you capture that data and how you filter and parse that data through the organization. And as we know, the data and, inter and, and information are not interchangeable terms. Data is raw data that's unparsed or unprocessed, and information is data that makes sense. It is being parsed or processed into logic. Now, if you look at the solution de design and deployment framework, this is just one model I wanted to share with you. And the model is very simple. It's plan and analyze, design, develop, deploy, and manage. And there are multiple uh, variations of this model out in the market. The key things I want to get across is that when you start a project, you need to consider the vision and the strategy. After you do the vision and strategy at the business design stage or at the the architecture stage, you can develop the business architecture. And this is where about 80% of the change happens in an organization at the business architecture level. And then it's a very valid notion to go off and do a proof of concept. The proof of concept can help you then. You iterate back to vision and strategy. You iterate back to the business architecture. And then you iterate forward to your business case. So the proof of concept will actually help you 
And in fact, if you even if you don't have a vision and strategy, you can still start with a proof of concept. It's a very, very valid way of starting a project. Play with it, get into a sandbox, uh, learn about the technology and see how it fits in your organization with a key focus on looking at a use case. After you do that, you can look at the solution architecture, or more the technical architecture for the solution and how it will integrate with the enterprise. You remember earlier how I talked about how the data flows from the operational level up to the tactical level and up to the strategic level. This is really what's captured in this section. And then you do your pilots, you prove it out, your pilot iterate back, iterates back as well to your solution architecture and you do your rollout, your full rollout, and then you have to manage it. Now this model, as I mentioned, it iterates back and forth. Now, now let's look at this model in a different framework. What if, uh, or actually before I go on to the different framework, let me just explain uh, this model here. When, when the, and the rationale around the business design and the use case, this is critically important. If one of my executives came into me in the past and said to me, uh, John, I have a fantastic project. We had a look at it. We're going to take out a million dollars out of the business. I would say to him or her, that's fantastic. Now I'm going to take a million dollars out of your budget because you're going to save a million dollars. So you have to be very cautious about how you approach a business case because the technology adoption will, will actually impact multiple pillars of value creation within an organization. And let me explain those. So what I would expect from my executives coming into me is that they're talking about whether they're increasing revenue, see the red box here, and underneath that, I have examples from an old project with uh, RFID or IOT, or IOT, just to give you some ideas. So they're either increasing revenue or they're reducing operational costs or they're op uh, optimizing the assets that we have employed or deployed within the organization. Now, these three are absolutely critical, increasing revenue, reducing cost or optimizing assets. The one on the right hand side here in yellow is what I call the variable. And this is something where you can talk about enhancing safety or quality control. This could be related to food safety or product safety. This is the variable that you, you, you can build in. Now, when you're going to uh, your executives with a business case, you need to be very solid on which of these pillars that you're impacting within the organization and also the investment costs. And the investment costs here that I've just given examples of software and tags, but also the ongoing maintenance, which is very important. So the run rate, how do you maintain and manage your, um, your, your the infrastructure once you put it in place? Now going on to this other model, I've just put this in a different uh, design or different framework for you, but it's essentially the same. And what I want to get across here is that you have PDIM, Plan, Design, Implement and Manage. And at the top left hand side in the business planning function, you have vision. Vision drives strategy and strategy drives business architecture, which then drives the technology architecture. And then you have proof of concept in the technical domain. So the, the technical plan area is proof of concept and technical architecture. This is very important to, uh, to consider how this flows. But you could also start, as I mentioned earlier, you could start with a proof of concept and then iterate back up to vision, strategy, and so on. And as this model starts to mature, the iterative model, as I just mentioned, every section in this iterates back to its previous model. The proof of concept feeds back into the business vision, which feeds the strategy and the business architecture. And also when you get into the maintenance mode, you're still, you always go back to the vision to see if what we've implemented 12 months ago is still part of our vision, and this is important. So this is a very simple model and it's a very iterative model. And if you apply this model with your projects, I guarantee you, you'll have more success than you're probably having today. Now, a couple of useful links for you to look at. I won't go through these projects except to point out the one at the bottom. This is from the People's Bank of China, and it just came out uh, just a couple of days ago. And it's very critical. The People's Bank of China is very critical on blockchain projects. But it really talks about rationality and ob objectivity to assess what blockchain can and cannot do. If you follow the guidance in those frameworks earlier, you'll be able to do that. So in summary, 80% of change in a business happens at the business process level. Business process mapping is a vital tool for success. And supply chain mapping is a necessary tool within an organization. A proof of concept is a valid starting point to fine tune a vision and a strategy. 
and iterating between the models and learnings using the learnings is absolutely vital. So I'd like to thank you for listening in. Don't forget, please join the Trace Alliance program. It's a collaboration hub for accelerating blockchain adoption. Currently, we have over 60 members and 60 companies working with us, although it says 50 on this slide. In the past week, we've added about 10 more. So we're delighted with the collaboration and the adoption of the blockchain uh, protocol from Origin Trail, and we welcome you as members. Thank you.